Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, gargoyles and philistines, cuties and even cuter than And all of you hotties out there and all of those in between, all of you little gender rebels like me. Welcome to another episode of Nine Lives, where I will be interviewing nine literal lives on nine literal Instagram lives. These flowers are still alive from my mom. I'm so excited to tell you that I have an incredible guest today, Shannon Beverage. Let's see if she's already around. Hello. What's up, Shannon? <laughs> Sorry, I just realized you couldn't see the top of my head from where I was sitting, so I was gathering some pillows. For, for those of you guys watching, me and Shannon are friends. We're buddies, and we almost have made music videos together. She's a photographer and a director, and also you print your own photography on your clothes. You can print your photography. Who is your favorite historical female figure? I mean, I want to say my grandma, but um, I don't think that that necessarily counts. <laughs> oh, I like that, though. I appreciate that. <laughs> she just was, like, the most empathetic, like, nicest human being, like, made everyone feel special. And I just aspire to be like her. So she's just such a cool lady. Like, um, But I also kind of want to hold you to this question and make you think of a famous person that's died. Oh, God. This, maybe this is controversial, but, like, Marilyn Monroe, I just think that iconic just iconic um what is one challenge you've had to overcome in your industry there's maybe like um like an idea of like a youtuber and like what a youtuber is and i think maybe like you can feel like branded by that in a way that's like you feel less legitimate in some way but that's also changed a lot it's like interesting because when i moved to la I moved here because I was like really doing YouTube and it was successful and whatever. And I remember being like an Uber rides and I'd be like, Oh, I'm, I'm a YouTuber. And I remember like all the drivers would always be like, you can like live off of that. And I would be like, I, I guess, I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, I feel like if, if I've had any issue, it would be like with that and how YouTube has changed and like how people view you as someone who is a creator on, on that platform. Yeah, I mean, that's so cool. You're a troubadour in your own industry and world. Name a woman who has had a big influence on you. There's so many. I feel like I'm, like, surrounded by women, especially in L.A. Like, when I moved here, I went to school in Oklahoma, and, like, I'm from Dallas, Texas. And when I came out here, like, I just immediately surrounded myself with, like, a lot of queer women. And I've continued to do that. And I feel like it would be a disservice to all the women in my life to just say one woman has had the biggest impact on me because it's just like it's everyone there's so many yeah I don't know obviously also my mom because I'm sure she would be offended if I didn't say her yeah that's beautiful I feel like that saying the queer female community totally counts because they are sort of like one gigantic being that just like knowing yeah. that that community exists can make you feel so much safer in the world life's motto advice to your younger self or best advice okay well, my whole YouTube channel is really dedicated to my younger self. So if you ever wanted to know what I wanted to say to myself, you could just watch that because definitely <laughs> the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, just watch all of that. Like, quote, my dad always told me to be intolerant to intolerance. Mm. So I feel like now more than ever, that's really um, important as well. So yeah, just to be intolerant to intolerance. My dad's advice to me was cross that bridge when you come to it, which is also really good. I feel like I like stress so much in my life. I try to control everything ahead of time. And yeah. that's just like so simple. And I can always see him saying it. Like, it's so nice to have good older people in your life who have so, advice for you. <laughs> so true. This, okay, this one's like really serious. I don't know if you're ready to go here, but um, salty or sweet? Um, I'm salty. Always. You are salty. I love this question because sometimes people answer it in a personality way and sometimes people choose what they want to eat. So which way did you just answer that? <laughs> Definitely food. I'm like, I'm, yeah, I'm more okay. of a salty food person. I would say I'm a sweet personality person salty I think food. that's like definitely what you give off but I thought you were okay. just like revealing a first look at the fact that you're actually oh, no. really nasty imagine no no I'm I think I'm sweet I definitely can be salty as a personality as well but I more mean that's sweet. necessary what makes you feel empowered strong and confident that's such a great question congrats on your song confident by the way and the thank video. you you know this is a plug <laughs> congrats it, it all looks amazing I feel like I feel most confident when I like put something out and it's received 
not necessarily like, oh, when I tweet something and a bunch of people are like, yeah, I feel the same way. But like, sort of like everything I've done with social media, like when I put out a message and it's received by a lot of people in a way that they're like, oh my God, I feel seen is when I feel the most confident. Cause I'm like, oh my God, I like was anxious to say that or put that out there. And now I know that I'm not alone. Okay, that was a really great answer. Um, <laughs> what is your most prized possession? Oh my gosh, this is so funny because I was looking at your Instagram to see like kind of like what your other interviews had been like. And I think you have like a, a I don't know, like a, I don't even understand Instagram anymore. It's so fucking weird to me. But <laughs> you had a highlight of someone talking about a ring. Yes. And I was like, oh my gosh, if they ask me this question, this is so awkward because this is like my answer as well. But a little different. I I always wore a ring of my grandma's on my ring finger. I have like a tattoo on it, like an awful oh, stick yeah. and poke tattoo, but memories. But I used to, it used to be hidden all the time because the ring was like perfectly big enough to cover it. Last year, I lost the ring in the ocean and it was a very traumatic experience. And I hired like two different metal detector guys to come out and try <laughs> to find it. I was like desperately trying to find this ring. And I cried and whatever. Um, but I think it was like the only, it was like my only thing that I had any like worth or like importance to, right? And I feel like for me, it was really sad, obviously I cried a lot, but like, I think it was just like a sign that like nothing, there's like nothing in the world that means more than like the actual person or people in your life. Like I just can't, I can't, afford to give anything that much weight ever again and I just don't I don't intend to so I feel like yeah my most prized possessions are human beings and not anything like I could lose everything that I have and I'll be fine that's so beautiful wow what is one thing everyone could do to make the world a better place uh, have more empathy just like in general I feel like we are so divided right now in so many ways, especially just with, I mean, obviously politics and like, just, I just don't, I feel like there's never gonna, we're never gonna get to a place again where we can see and understand each other unless people can be more empathetic and like have conversations where you're like actually earnestly trying to teach someone something or like share your experience because right now it's just so much of like, this is what's right, this is what's right we're never going to agree with each other and like obviously at the end of the day there's a lot of things that I truly believe are wrong and I don't agree with people's opinions but just yelling into the void and like yelling at those people and being like you're wrong I'm right you're never going to get anywhere with that so I think just being more empathetic and if both sides could be more empathetic hopefully we could come to some kind of like understanding of like how the world could be a better place for both of us yeah you know? I I totally feel that, especially being like involved in social media, there uh, there is actually like algorithms at work to show you what you want to see and to also make you excited when you see division break out, you know, cancel culture is like super unhelpful. Like, even though I'm incredibly like, I don't know, I'm dedicated to work against sexual violence and inclusion of LGBT people. I do feel like we're not having enough conversations with the people who are getting it wrong. We're not teaching anybody how to talk about consent. We're just talking to ourselves with people who agree that the other guys are bad. And I feel like that empathy also like requires going outside of your bubble and trying to find a way to actually learn something or have an actual uncomfortable conversation. And it's hard because so much of it is like on a platform where people are watching. So people get defensive before they're willing to make mistakes. Totally. Okay, this is the last question. Um, it's it's hard. I feel like this question is hard. What okay. is the best thing about being you? Oh, rough, right? <laughs> yeah, it's so rough. Yeah. It, oh my god. I think the best thing is that I have a platform to speak to people and talk about things that I I want the world to be talking about and like that is such a privilege. I feel like a privilege that's changed a lot because the platforms are like, there's more people with them than there's ever been. Like when I first started doing social media stuff, cause it was so long ago, I, I remember it being such a crazy thing that I had like 10,000 followers, like in 2014 or whatever. And I was like, yeah, this is wild. But like, it is crazy that I've spent so much time now being able to be like, this is what I think. 
and there is a platform of people that are like, oh, you know, that's, that's wild. And it was like, it was, I think when like Black Lives Matter stuff started happening too, I was just like, this is crazy that I can speak about this, that I can talk about it at all is, I am so privileged that like, I have an audience to, to talk to about mm -hmm. this. And yeah, I think that's definitely probably like the best thing about being me right now, I feel is that I can, I can say something and someone's gonna listen. Yeah, that's really, really valuable and definitely cool that you recognize that as a privilege and are doing what you can to make it authentic and important and helpful to the state of the world. Thanks for doing this. It was really of fun course. to hang out with you for a sec and let's like expand on it in real life. I would love that. Thank you for asking me to be a part of this. It's awesome. You did a great job. You're so cool. <laughs> I'm going to go binge your whole YouTube channel and you guys should Oh do my God. Yeah, <laughs> maybe don't, but you can yeah. send me like a playlist of your favorites that you want okay. to see. Okay, perfect. Anyway, bye everybody. Listen, everybody's yelling that Shannon should go back to YouTube. Let Shannon take a break. You know what I'm saying? Let her do her own thing. She's a great director. She's got to expand. Thank you for coming to Nine Lives. That was one of our nine lives. And I'm going to leave you with an Eartha Quick Kit quote. Eartha Kit 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 quote. Cats have nine lives, but you only have one. So buckle up for safety. And we'll see you on Wednesday with Tish Allen, a pro golfer. Can't wait. See you guys later. Shout out Lady Gun. Mm -hmm.